Let's do it. This is how you watch the AZ. Hey, this is how you watch the AZ. Hey, keeping the faith in the king, and the patience will give us the strength. Hey, brother, we had a question. Yeah. One second, sis. We'll do what you have to do, brother. You've been patiently waiting. And we'll get to you next, all right? Ephesians, uh, in Ephesians, it says, right there, that he came down and gave Ephesians, what's your chapter verse? Ephesians 2, okay. Read that. What verse? Verse 2, verse 2, 2. Verse 2 and 2, read. This is the book of Ephesians, chapter 2, verse 2. Wherein? In time past, you walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, wherewith he loved us. It wherewith he loved us. So, the point of, what's the point of you bringing out your scripture? What's your name, King? Charles. Charles, my name's El Kanan. Brother Charles, what was your point of bringing out Ephesians 2? What, what, what is that to say? Uh, it just means like he created, he doesn't hate anybody. He doesn't hate anybody? Okay. If he came, Jesus Jesus died for our sins. For, for your sins tomorrow and the next For everybody's day. sins. Yeah, for the next day, it don't matter if you're black, white, Jew, whatever. It don't matter, okay. I, I'm just... No, no, I'm listening. I'm confirming it. That's right. what I, I've been going through. Okay. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah, once you find God, then walk in His way, and if you turn back to sin, yeah, then you're disobedient to Him. You're not up to God. All right, so I'm going to deal with everything you just said. First thing you said, God don't hate. Well, we got to get the understanding of that out of the Bible. Read what you got. This is the book of Romans, chapter 9, verse 13. Bring it up. It is written, Jacob have I loved. Jacob have I loved. Who's Jacob? Who is Jacob, brother? Jacob is one of the apostles. Jacob is the forefather of the 12 tribes of Israel. That's right. He loved Jacob. Read. But Esau have I hated. The Bible say? But Esau have I hated. The Bible say? Hey. But Esau have I hated. But Esau, when the script, when the understanding comes out, Brother Charles, the devil comes. The devil will want you, Brother Charles, to have understanding. You got to listen to this right now. Because you said God has given you visions, and you've been having a vision of a black man in your mind, right? And has been telling you that this one is the devil? No. Well, you got, that's why God brought you up here to get understanding. Thank you. He says he's Yahweh. So the black man's Yahweh. Yeah. And this white man's the devil. Okay. No, no, no. Like, that's what? fucking, uh, what is it? Uh, the no, 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 no. Give me uh, Ephesians 2 and 11. So we dealt with God hates. Hey, hold on real quick, brother. What's your name? Chris. Brother Chris, hold on. Let me deal with this, brother, real quick. Because obviously the devil don't want the word to come out. Right. We already dealt and with that statement you made, God don't hate. God said he hates Esau, right? So we got to find out and understand who is Esau according to the Bible. The scriptures break it down from Genesis to Revelation that Esau is the so-called white man on this earth that rules this whole earth today. That's right. So that's who Esau is. Jacob is the 12 tribes of Israel who we come from that God loves. The next thing you said was God came, Christ came to die for everybody. Let's see if that's true. I want uh, Ephesians 5. Give me Ephesians 5 and 30 and then read the 31. Because we got to deal with this thing uh, question by question, all right? You just say to something and here goes the answer out of the Bible. We're not bringing our own words. Read. This is the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 30. Dang. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and... Or Acts 5 and 30, my bad. Give me Acts 5 and 30, that's what I want. Acts 5 and 30, because we got to see who Christ came and died for. We got to get the understanding. We're in the 
the New Testament? Well, it said right there, well, when you ask what did the scripture just say that we just read in Acts? It says that in your book. Who did Christ give repentance to? Israel. He gave repentance to Israel. That's who Christ came and died for. Read Hebrews 8 and 8 because he said that's not in the New Testament. We got to get understanding of who the New Testament is for. Who did Christ come and die for? We got to get you that understanding, Brother Charles. Read. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 8, verse 8. For finding fault with them, he said, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel. The new covenant's for who? The house of Israel. The house of who? The house of Israel. So who is the new covenant for according to the Bible? So you know. Brother Charles? House of Israel. Is that everybody? Is that everybody? No, it's not everybody. So what you got to do, just like the uh, brother Andrew has to do, you got to change your mind and away from the things of this world and the things you've been taught by your oppressors, by your enemies that rule this earth. You got to change your thinking. Christ and God is not for everybody. He's not for the whole planet. He's only for the Israelites. That's who he came and died for. Well, you just need to quit doing drugs, brother, period. That's what you need to quit doing. Give me um, 1 Samuel 15, 23. Because you know what you, you, you dabbling in? You dabbling in witchcraft. That's right. And guess what? And guess what? Satan don't want you to believe in a black Jesus. Bring it up! Satan don't want you to believe in a black God. So every time you do drugs, he gonna put a black image in your mind for you to go away from the truth that Christ is a black man, according to the Bible. Bring it up! He trying to keep you away from the understanding that Christ and God are black men. Right. That you dabbling in witchcraft when you deal with drugs, when you, when you, when you alter your understanding. All right? Hold on, let me read this real quick. Read. This is the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 15, verse 23. For rebellion is the sin of witchcraft. So you dealing with rebellion. God didn't tell you to smoke uh, at drugs to get closer to him. So that's rebellion right there. And that's the sin of witchcraft. That's what you're dabbling in right now. So that's why you're getting, uh, uh, every time you get whatever drugs you're doing, you, you get to a, a understanding that that black man is evil. Well, guess what? The Bible says Christ is a black man. So, if, if you get an understanding that black is evil, then you're getting that understanding from Satan. I'm black. black I, I, so, wh where are you getting that understanding from? Because what I'm telling you, I had this devil. Uh, I, I had a premonition. I wasn't doing it. I wasn't doing it. I wasn't doing it. Numbers 23 and 23. And it went boom, like a devil came up into the sky and everything. Like, mm. Because of that. I'm going to be honest with you, Brother Charles. I, I, I hear you. All right. I, I believe when you dabble into drugs and you dabble into a life of sin and you come away from the understanding of this Bible, Satan has control over you. Right, he can play mind games and play tricks on your mind. When you come back to an understanding that you are an Israelite and you got to keep God's laws and commandments, this is what the Bible says. Read. It's the book of Numbers, chapter 23, verse 23. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob. There is what? No enchantment against Jacob. So no enchantment, no spells can come against the children of Israel uh, from the children of Jacob. There's no enchantment that these devils can put upon us to make us go sin against God. Read. Neither is there any divination against Israel. Okay. Neither what? Neither is there any divination against Israel. Against who? Against Israel. If you don't understand that you Israel and you're not keeping these laws and commandments, guess what you're subjugated to? You're subjugated to enchantment, spells, and divinations. And, and, and what they use is drugs to be able to alter your mind so they can allow demons and spirits to enter into you and, and um, um, dwell in you. So Jacob and Israel don't have to go through those things. And that's what you're dealing with. 
You're not dealing with understanding according to the Bible. Give me that in Psalms. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 111, verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, brother Charles. That's what you have to come to. The fear of God so you can begin to get wisdom. How do you fear God? You believe everything that comes out of this Bible. Don't go off your own understanding or the understanding of the other nations who hate you and hate God. Read. A good understanding have all things that do his commandments. No, that do drugs. That do his commandments. No, that get hot. That do his commandments. What do you got to do, brother, to get understanding from God? Brother Charles, you're on. Yeah. What do you got to do to get understanding from God? Proverbs 8, 13. It's a drug. It's still a drug. It alters your mind. No, we don't teach we don't teach to smoke uh, uh, drugs to get close to God. But that's not what we teaching right here. That's why I'm asking you to preach that. No, we're not preaching that because it's not necessary. You know what we're preaching? We're preaching laws and commandments that our people must follow in order to get understanding of God. Because you got these other uh, divinations and enchantments going on in your mind that is giving, getting you away from the understanding of this Bible. So we, we're preaching to you today, Brother Charles, because today's your day to get understanding of what you must do in order to get closer to God and get understanding. That's why Satan comes all over here to confuse you from this Bible so you can continue on in your old ways and your old paths. All right, read what you got. It's the book of Proverbs, chapter 8, verse 13. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. It's to do what? To hate evil, pride, and arrogancy, and the evil way, and the forward mouth. Do I hate? So that's how you fear God. You got to hate evil and depart from that evil. Getting high and trying to elevate your mind to see if you get closer to God, that's evil. And anything that you receive from that understanding is evil, brother. You have to, give me uh, Titus 2 and 6. Titus 2 and 6. So this is the only way you're going to get understanding, brother, if you come back to the laws and commandments and the understanding that you're an Israelite. What, what's your, uh, Haitian from the tribe of Levi. He's Haitian. Judah, from the tribe of Judah. All right, brother? Yeah. Read. This is the book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 6. Young men likewise, exhort to be sober-minded. Give me the age, man. Is the age man in there? Read on. In all things, showing thyself. Give me two and one. Verse one. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine, that the aged men be sober. So we right now, what we're doing is speaking sound doctrine to you right now, brother. Doctrine of this Bible that makes sense according to the Bible. The sound doctrine is the laws and commandments in this Bible. Give me Proverbs 4 and 2 real quick. So we're speaking sound doctrine. We're not telling you to go get high to get closer to God. That's not sound doctrine. But that's what you did, and this is where you're getting your understanding from, brother. That is, That wasn't inspired of God. That was inspired of Satan. That's what you need to understand right now. We're giving you sound doctrine. Read. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 4, verse 2. For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. So the good doctrine that God has given you, brother Charles, is to not forsake his laws. Is his laws. That's what you got to follow. That's what you got to keep. Go back to that, uh, Titus. Read. The book of Titus, chapter 2, verse 2. That the aged men be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, and patience. So you got to be sober, grave, and temperate, all right? Going and, and getting closer to God, getting high, that's not you being sober, all right? You got to come back to the laws and commandments and the understanding of these laws. Do you understand that? All right, so let's get... Um, uh, um, 1 Corinthians 11, let's see if this brother's going to follow some laws. Simple laws, simple task, brother. Yeah, read what you got. This is the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man. You listen there, brother Charles? So the head of the man is who? Christ. Christ is our head. That's our leader. Read it. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of the woman is who? The man. The man. So it's not 50-50. The woman's not running things. You're the head of your wife. All right? Read. And the head of Christ is God. 
And the head of Christ is God. Now let's get to the point. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. So when this Bible's coming out and we're prophesying to you, you're prophesying to us. What must you do according to the Bible? Read that again. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoreth his head. Having your head covered when you're prophesying about the Bible, he does what? Dishonoreth his head. I want you to notice something about every brother that's up here right now. Right? When it comes to our head. What's going on? Why not? Because what I said? Because what the Bible says. That's why. Right? Because we want to get understanding and fear God and keep his commandments. That's why we're able to be up here and teach the people because God has given us understanding because we're obedient to his laws and commandments. All right, we're going to read it again and see if you uh, make actions. Read. Every man, pray. All praise. Let's clap it up for this brother. All praise to the most high. See, that's a sign of repentance, King. That's what you got to come back to is repentance and changing your ways. Let me get 1 Kings 8. Let me get 1 Kings 8. It's all praises. You're the second brother to take your hat off today and follow these laws. So we 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 gonna continue to deal with you, brother Charles. All right, we want you to come back to this understanding. You gotta be sober though. Read. It's the book of First Kings, chapter eight, verse forty-six. If they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not, and thou be angry with them and deliver them to the enemy, so that they carry them away captives unto the land of the enemy. So what, what we're at right now, we are captives in the land of our enemy. We are captives in the land of our enemies, right? Who taught us this Bible? Who taught us how to serve God? Who taught us this understanding? Our enemies have taught us that, right? You got to understand where we're at today, brother. All right, read. So that they carry them away captive unto the land of the enemy, far or near. Yet, if they shall bethink themselves, they shall do what? If they shall bethink themselves, what does it mean to bethink yourself, Brother Charles? Use your own understanding? No, that's not what that means. Bethink yourself? Uh huh. Reprogram your mind. Reprogram your mind to what? What you're supposed to be. Kind of sort of. It's to remember who you are. You got to remember who you are, what people you come from, who you are. So we as Israelites have to remember we are the Israelites according to the Bible. We have to remember all these curses that happened to us for our disobedience. We have to remember that we are in the land of our captivity of under another nation that hate us. So you have to remember who you are, brother. Read. Read. Yet, if they shall bethink themselves in the land, whether they were carried captives, and repent, and, do what? and repent. So repentance is a process, brother Charles. There's many things you have to do besides just taking off your hat when the scriptures come out. There's many things you must do to get understanding of this Bible. But you have to start with remembering who you are and repenting. All right, read. And make supplication unto thee in the land of them that carried them captive, saying, We have sinned and have done perversely. We have committed wickedness. And so return unto thee with all thy heart. So we have to understand that we are much wickedness. Just like when uh, Brother Andrew was here, he understood that uh, celebrating birthdays is much wickedness. It's a satanic ritual. We wouldn't understand that unless we get understanding from this Bible that God uh, disagrees with all that pagan customs and traditions, right? Just like with your understanding that God and uh, Christ loves everybody, God came for everybody. That is understanding we have to put away from us. What, where, what, what scripture is that? Hebrews 9. Get Hebrews 9, 15. I'll, I'll read 23, but get Hebrews 9 and 15. And then I'm going to ask you a question to help you get understanding. Because you have no understanding of the New Testament, brother. You have no understanding because you don't keep law one. All right, so this is why we're out here to give you understanding because you're still wrestling with the understanding of the New Testament. It's the book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 15. And for this call, he is the mediator of the New Testament. He is the mediator. Who is the he is talking about? 
Matter of fact, before we even get to that, give me 2 Peter 3 and 15. So this bro, so we can help this brother out real quick. We're going to help you out with some understanding that most Christians that don't understand this Bible about Paul, most Christians don't understand the understanding and writing of Paul. Why? Because they were taught the Bible by the slave master. Do the slave masters understand the Bible like the Israelites? No, they do not. They're going off their own understanding. We're going we're gonna to give you that understanding because we're all prisoners of Christ. Why? Because we're locked into the covenant that our forefathers made with God and Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob when we were in the wilderness with Moses. So we're all locked down to the covenant of God. We're all prisoners. Read with you guys. Is that what I wanted? Read, read, read. This is the book of 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 15. And account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul. Beloved brother who? Beloved brother Paul. So who is Peter talking about right here, brother Charles? Paul. Okay, read. Also, according to the wisdom given unto him, have written unto you, as also in all his epistles, speaking in them the, of these things. All his epistles is talking about all the letters that he wrote to each and every church. So Peter is going to warn, warn the brothers and sisters about Paul's writings, right? He's giving us a warning. Read. In which are some things hard to be understood. What? Hard to be understood. What about Paul's letters? Hard to be understood. Paul's letters are hard to be understood, Brother Charles. And I see every time you want to bring out a point, you go to Paul's writings. Peter's letting you know his letters are hard to be understood. So you don't have understanding of Paul's uh, writing. So what you need to do is just listen and learn right now. Read. Which they that are unlearned. They that are what? Unlearned. The reason why you're unlearned, Brother Charles, because you learn everything and uh, uh, other understanding from your enemies, your slave masters, from the church houses. So you're unlearned because the enemies that were set over us don't know this Bible like the children of Israel. So you learn their understanding. So you're unlearned according to this Bible. Read. And unstable. What? And unstable. Rest. You're unstable and you rest. You struggle with the understanding of this Bible. So you lean on the understanding of your oppressors. And that's where you got your understanding from. Read. As they do also the other scriptures. As they what? As they do also the other scriptures. So you're going to struggle with this Bible and the understanding of this Bible until you learn the Bible from learned Israelite men. Because the, uh, the promises and the secrets and the mysteries and the parables of this Bible only belong to the children of Israel. They don't belong to the enemy that was set over you to oppress you. So your understanding needs to change. You need to humble down and listen. Read. Read. Until their own destruction. Unto what? Until their own destruction. Unto what? Until their own destruction. Until your own destruction, if you don't humble down and learn the Bible from the prophets that God has sent in these last days. All right? Let's go to Hebrews 9 and 15 now. Because you want to know about Hebrews 9 and 23. We're going to read verse 15 to get the understanding. Read what you got. It's the book of Hebrews, chapter 9, verse 15. And for this call, he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament. Hold on, read that again. I don't think the brother was listening. For the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament. Who was under the first testament that Christ came to be the mediator of the New Testament for? Who was under the first testament? Huh? The Gentiles? Give, give me um, Psalm 78 and 5, I believe. And then uh, 1 Chronicles 16 and 17. Get 1 Chronicles 16 and 17 first. And it might be second. Just double check. He had a question the, about that uh, Hebrews 9 and 15 said he was uh, a mediator for the New Testament for them that were in the first Testament. Who is that talking about? Who? The brother said that? 16, 17? What scripture did he use? Is it? This is the book of 1 Chronicles, chapter 16, verse 17. And have confirmed the same to Jacob for a law. To who? Jacob for a law. Jacob is the forefathers of the 12 tribes of Israel. He confirmed a law to Jacob. Read. And to Israel for an everlasting covenant. To who? And to Israel for an everlasting covenant. So who was the first covenant given to? According to the Bible. 
Jacob. He on meth, huh? Jacob to Israel. That was the first hey, covenant. The, the covenant of animal sacrifice was given it to Israel, to our forefather Jacob. That was the first covenant. Is there more on that? The worst spot in this Go back to uh, Hebrews 9. Right, we don't do animal sacrifice, no. Christ is the ultimate sacrifice for those that were in the first covenant. That's right! Not for everybody. Right! That's what Hebrews 9 and 15 is saying. Right? Because what did your slave master teach you, Brother Charles? It's slavery. God loves everybody. Everybody can be saved. Love your enemies. Forgive, forgive. Even though we kill you, just love me because we're going to be in the kingdom of heaven with you. Right? That's a lie. That's a doctrine of devils. That's a doctrine of Satan. Christ only came for the Israelites and only died for the Israelites. And the covenants were only given to the Israelites. Read what you got. It's the book of Hebrews. Chapter 9, verse 15. And for this cause, he is the mediator of the New Testament. For this cause, Christ is the mediator of the New Covenant, the New Testament, which belongs to who, according to Hebrews 8 and 8? We just read it to you. Jacob and Israel. There you go, read. That by means of death, for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament. So, by the means of death, to redeem them that were under the First Testament, who's that talking about? We just read it. Jacob and Israel. So, is that for everybody? Is that is that for everybody? Now it is. We're, we're, we're reading. We're reading in the New Testament, brother. We're reading in the New Testament. The scriptures that you're trying to pull will give you understanding that it's only for Israel. And it's only for Jacob. Right? God is not choosing everybody to, to be his people. He only has one nation of people that he comes for. Let me get a basic uh, Matthew 15, 24. Get that real quick. I'm going to help you understand, King. Because you got to come to this understanding that you're chosen and everyone else is not. That's right. You're, you're God's chosen people and the people you're learning the Bible from is the ones that God hates and they want to destroy you. So you got to come away from their understanding and come to the understanding of this Bible. Read. This is the book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Guess who was talking, brother? Guess who was talking? Christ was talking. Christ, the black Messiah, told a woman from another nation, I'm only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I'm not sent for everybody else. That's out of the sons of God's mouth. We used to scream black power while Haram was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how our men repented at heart The scriptures is proof IUIC, we deliver the truth